I now want to give you a scripture. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. I think, you know, uh, it, it, it's, it's just that simple. And therefore, certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, but left... Uh, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Do you recall that? In other words, that which he saved, he allowed to be destroyed. That which he made, he will allow to be hurt. The people feel helpless because of the uh, the toxic spraying going on in the air. Uh, the people of the Lord will not be affected. Period. This is a word from the Lord. I know it's ugly, and I know people around you may die of cancer, but you won't. I don't know why we weren't sharing this word before, but it was because I didn't understand it. The Lord said, let me worry about the chemtrails. Most people are so dumbed down in this country, they have no idea what we're talking about. No idea uh, what the truth is. But I'll just say this. The chemtrails are as the word of the Lord is. There's no poison that's going to affect you. There's no chemtrail that will affect you. If you belong to God, 10,000 may fall to the left, 10,000 may fall to the right, but you won't fall. You're here to be a witness. You're here to witness the satanic uh, politicians and the, and, the, and the mind control programming attempts and the and incredible amounts of surveillance these pathetic people um, think that somehow with all the cameras and with all the, the, uh, the, the with all that uh, technology has to bear that somehow they can see into one's soul. My friends, they cannot see into your soul. They do not see into your soul. And furthermore, they will not be able to surveil the Holy Spirit in you. Of course, this is ridiculous seeing all these objects and devices that can't penetrate one centimeter of the spirit, that cannot measure one iota of spirit, that can't see one thing of spirit. But we know from the persecution of Christians in America, which, hallelujah, thank God that came. We predicted it would come. Many others did as well. We were all given an accurate word by the Lord, amen, that persecution would come to America and we would see it. Back when we, when we prophesied, all of us, we, it looked impossible, didn't it? Remember, put yourself back in that time, 2001, 2000, 2003, 2004 even. Did not look like there would be Christian persecution. Indeed, the Chinese underground church would pray that persecution would come to America and their prayer was answered, yes. I would ask the Lord, Lord, why in America are these Christians not persecuted? Since all over the world, to be a Christian is a hard walk. It's a hard road. It's a road of isolation, you know, it's because... You have to understand that modern society as it is is extremely suspicious of Christians, as you saw with the IRS probe, uh, that Christian, they even want to know, what are you praying about? They, they don't understand it. They don't understand a man of faith. They don't understand a woman of faith. They don't understand a family that prays. They don't understand why it's important. They just know that they feel uncomfortable about it and they feel they have to go stop it. 
hence persecution. If you don't stop it, we'll throw you in jail. If you don't stop it, we'll execute you. If you don't, you know, or whatever. We'll, 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 life will go very hard for you if you make a public display. I had a dream last night that I was arrested for um, praying in a park. You know, leading some, some people in prayer. And, you know, just like four or five people, a little prayer circle, you know. And, um, and then I was in front of the uh, judge. And uh, he just said, what are you... I think this was what uh, the Lord wants me to be. I think we, he wants us all to pray more. I think I, this last week I partied more and prayed less. But I prayed all night every night sometimes. Anyway, I was in front of the judge, and, he, and he's trying to understand and asking me questions about why do you feel a need to make a public spectacle. And I said, Your Honor, I'm not trying to make a public spectacle. I'm just, I am who I am. I'm, I'm Zeph, you know? And Zeph is just, everything's about the Lord. I mean, that's just my whole waking day. There's, I, what can I do? It's just, you know, I'm, I just am me. And I pray, and I walk, and I talk, and I eat, and I make mistakes, and I'm sorry, but I pray, and you know, and something pops up spontaneously in a park, in an office building, in an elevator, on the street. Um, I'm there. It's just the most natural thing for me to do. It's just that's who I am. And then uh, it was like, well, let's see how you are after 30 days. <laughs> it's like, well, that's, you know, and again, if you get 30 days in jail, then what, what is it, what happens there? Uh, prayer, sharing the word, um, uh, praising the Lord. I, I, you know, that's what they did in the old days. And it just seems like I can't think of anything else to do. You understand? I, I used to have all, I brought you their fruits, you, sh you shall know them. I, I can't believe how, how, uh, okay, we're going to just keep on, we're going to keep on rolling here. And you don't, you don't think I'm going to come back to this certain things, but uh, the Lord said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and, and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. This is, these are Jesus' words. Who is Jesus? Let's just get back to that now before we go back to the, um, to the Lord destroying that. Yes. The Lord, I said the Lord will destroy that which he saved. He will destroy that which he lifted up. He will destroy that which he helped to build. He will destroy that which he created if there is disobedience by his people that would benefit from it. He will take it away. The Lord gives, he takes. He, he gives, you disobey, he takes. He gives, you do your own thing, he takes. I'm the Alpha and the Omega. This is the identity of Jesus. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. The Almighty, capital A. I, Jesus Christ, am the Almighty. Okay? It's Revelation 1, verse 8. I, the identity of Jesus Christ is I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, which is and was and which is to come, saith the Almighty. Saith the Almighty. And these words are in red in this version. I'm not sure what version I have. I've got a King James version, I guess. Okay. Well, look, it doesn't seem like it, though. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, saith the Lord, in Ren, which is and which was and which is to come, comma, the capital A, Almighty. I, Jesus Christ, am the beginning and the end, which was, which is, and which is to come. In other words, I am all things. I am, I am. The Almighty. 
I don't know how in the world that a person could possibly miss the identity of Jesus as spoken in the word. Words that are so powerful and so otherworldly, the way they're presented here, as to defy human authorship completely. Because my spirit recognizes that comes directly from the kingdom of God to me. You see, my friends, that, <laughs> that is the thing that they really, really just don't understand. The idea that there's a God and that we must, you know, there's nothing in America. There's a lot of people here that are of faith. Well, prophetically then, you are the witnesses. You remnant, you people of faith, are witnesses of God's moving. Well, he'll protect you. He, I already told you, the whole thing from the sky, okay? The chemtrails, 10,000 to the left, 10,000 to the right. Thought I wouldn't come back to that, huh? And what happens? You don't get sick. Don't you understand how biblical that is? And there are many things like that. You must just have faith and stop worrying. Why are you worrying, child of God? Why are you worrying? You belong to him, then why are you worrying? You're worried about, will your kids ever get... Well, you know what? It's up to the Lord and your kids and, and that relationship. It's not up to you. You've exposed them to it? Okay, it's a, look, it's up to him. He doesn't take every kid. In the end, he's going to win in the sense of there will be justice, there will be goodness, there will be only the kingdom. There isn't some obey the obelisk. The obelisk seen around the world and seen in, certainly seen in um, um, Saudi Arabia uh, and, and, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the Islamic world. The obelisk is called Satan. The pyramid is, you know, for sacrificial cults. Thousands of them around the world. They're all intertwined with the soul and scalping thereof. And they're all intertwined with what you call the aliens and the, um, you know, the whole Babylonian or mystery Babylon system, which is based on that. The whole world is based on that. And most of the people belong to that. Their souls are tethered to the pyramid. And um, that's basically the, the civilization that is in front of you now. You're here to be witnesses. You were born to be a witness. You are living in a... In a as, your, as your scales are taken off your eyes, you're seeing... Just what was here already when you were born and before you were born, it was the same. That's why I don't, you don't get all up tight about like, is this the end times, that the end? The Lord says in Zephaniah 1, I will utterly consume all things from the land, saith the Lord. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven, the fishes of the sea, and the stumbling blocks with the wicked. And I will cut off man from off the land, saith the Lord, I will also stretch out mine hand upon Judah and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place and the name of the uh, Chemerims with the priests, and them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops, and them that worship and that swear by the Lord, and that swear by Malcolm, and them that are turned back from the Lord, and those that have not sought the Lord nor inquired of him. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice, he hath bid his guests. And shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice, that I will punish the princes and the king's children, and all such as are clothed in strange apparel. The Lord will take down, yeah, what, Catholics? Um, well, that's pretty strange apparel, if you ask me. Uh, but the point, the point here is, is that the Lord will 
destroy that which he, which he blessed. He will, he will uh, do this with Israel. This is Zephaniah speaking to, to uh, prophesying of the, of the great day of the Lord to come, which was believed by uh, the Jews. And um, I will utterly consume all things from off the land. A day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men and they shall walk like blind men. That bring a bell? Because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as dung. Okay, let's let the prophet speak. You know, absolutely. And the parallel today is this is the same situation we're facing. So I would expect that this word, which I could see someone getting arrested for saying something like that, can you? Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of them that dwell in the land. A speedy riddance means they're all dead. This is a prophecy which is yet to come due, said by Zephaniah. A prophecy yet to come due and now being uttered here. This is, I believe, a prophecy about what you're seeing. Please do not lament the further disintegration of the situation, but know this. Let me give you a word of comfort. Let me give you a word of comfort. The, the, the people implementing all this, their own will die and they will go down with the ship as well. You, the witnesses, will see that. You'll see that, yes, the Lord didn't spare. You know, yes, the good people got hurt, yes, but then the bad people that are perpetrating this evil, they also went down by their own hand. The Lord will consume all out of the land his remnant he will take to himself, but you know, and, and you're, you're there to be a witness. 10,000 to the left, 10,000 to the right. They're, they're doing everything they can with all the poisoning and the GMO, everything they can to kill you anyway, to bring plague and to, do, to escalate the cancers and escalate all of those things. It's just pure evil. So they're doing all those things, and you are the witness. Yes? What other purpose would you have here then? Right. We're with, in other words, we're here to do the Lord's work. We, you, you're with the Lord and, and because you're witnesses of it and you can testify of these things and that will uh, cause other people as well to wake up and the Lord pulls in those to himself. But there's nothing else going on here. This is the gathering of the Lord and, and the Lord is, is you know preparing his harvest and his harvest time and the, the angels will reap, and death is, is uh, you know, the final arbiter, and decisions are made, the judgment of the quick and the dead, and the dividing up of the kingdom, who's in, who's out, who's in, who's, who's out, who's not, and all of that is going on. The dividing of sheep and goats, there used to be like a, a recruiting of the sheep and a recruiting of the goats and all that, but those recruiting days are over. Now it's just is you are either sheep or goat there is no recruiting anymore uh, the force of the, the destroyers uh, who serve the devil who intone God when it's convenient will label tax paying Christians who mean no harm to anyone as the enemy they don't mean me they're talking to the 501c3 people that they're the enemy now which I hope they will deny every application 501c3 status. I hope they deny it all. Because the Lord has no business with 501c3. None. So when we're being outraged about this, let's just go to disobedience 101. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die, 
a lie. And then, for God doth know the day that you eat thereof, and your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Mm -hmm. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree that uh, to be desired uh, to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and they did eat, i.e., they, uh, they were both initiated into Satanism 101. Oh, how could Eve, the mother of all living, be a Satanist? Well, I, you know, call them prodigals. They, they lost their way there. What they were designed to do that. They didn't have, you know, if they didn't have a weakness in them, they would never eat eaten of the tree. God made them to eat of the tree because without that, we wouldn't have this whole story. Without the whole story, then God wouldn't have from Genesis to Revelation. It, it, you know, he will, um, you know, he, he was and is and, and is to come. He's in all things, and yet he stands outside time. And he created this story. Oh, no, God can't be any part of sin. He, well, I'm not saying it's part of sin. I'm just saying he made them. Had, if it was your logic... He would have, this is why I quit church. This is why I dropped out. You never, right, we went back to, you never explained that right. If God's omniscient, all-knowing, omnipresent, and, and everything, and, and is the Almighty, then he could have made Adam and Eve to not uh, fall prey to the serpent. Knowing, of course, that that could be a danger, and he could make it so the serpent never showed up there. You know, I made it so they wouldn't fail the test. It was, it's not their fault at all that they were, you know. Well, then it's not. It's, so they don't understand when they see people that are not conformed to the world or, you know, meaning people of faith because of you can't just be unconformed. You're either going to be conformed to the world or conformed to Christ or one of God's. You can't just be walking around as a human that serves no one. You have to serve one side or the other. And they can't understand that how people can belong to something. They just don't. It's like other. You know what the fight is all about? It's like two species. You see the insect species or you see the horses fight. You see, you know, there's just, there's no explaining it. The two sides are going to fight. They're incompatible. A person of God is incompatible with a, a leftist commie thug. The, the one has to kill the other. Incompatible with Caesar Caesar has to put them to death. Don't you? They, but they didn't do anything wrong. Jesus didn't do anything wrong. Why are we crucifying him? Because this bothers us. We have to find a way to crucify him because we don't want him around. Because this God thing frightens us. We have to kill it. So now we label them as terrorists, peaceful people that would never raise a hand to anyone in retaliation. If anything, they would be forgiving. And now they're the terrorists. And the Muslim extremist is now the freedom fighter patriot. Psalm 33. Psalm 33, 3, 3, 3, okay? Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. Got any metal people out there? There you go. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people to none effect. The Lord destroys that which is not his, that which rebels against him, that which is heathen, he brings to naught. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. The Lord looks from heaven and beholds the sons of men. We're in Psalm 33 here, so we'll look it up. From the place of his habitation, he looketh upon the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioneth their hearts alike and considereth their works. There is no king saved by the multitude of a host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. A horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any of his by great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. What's famine? GMO. What's famine? Uh, the, the weather modification drought. What's famine? 
uh, also poisoning from the sky. Our soul waiteth for the Lord, and he is our help and our shield. That means from all the things you're upset about right now. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. And this is meant to be sung. I think I would like to put this to music because it says, sing unto him a new song and play skillfully with a loud noise. That's exactly what we try to do. <laughs> Uh, and then I'm going to tie it up all together. The Lord destroys that which he, um, which he has also loved. You know, the Lord destroys that which he has also cherished. The Lord destroys that which he is. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go over here. We're good. we're just riffing through the Bible here because we really need to establish this um, this word. Okay, so, basically, well, how come I'm, okay, now I'm kind of, now my iPad version is, is giving me trouble. Okay, um, there we go, and then five, thank you. There it is. The day cometh and shall burn like an oven, and all the proud, yea, and uh, we're really in the end time. We're really in the day of the Lord kind of chapters here. Uh, all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. You shall go forth and shall grow up as calves of the stall. Okay, so there's that divide. There are the witnesses of the Lord here to witness this destruction of the civilization of which they will never build their utopia, ever, will never, ever. Oh, it may look like they have it for a while, but no, no. The Lord will never allow it. He will never allow it. The Lord, again, to tie the theme up of this talk today, he destroys that which he makes. He destroys, for disobedience, people whom he once Saved, he destroys. He destroys the heathen, especially those who know the Lord's word, but because they want to belong to something, join the other side. He will destroy that. Well, he'll cause, how will he do it? Lightning bolts from heaven? No, he'll cause them to be paranoid of each other. He'll cause confusion amongst them. They will attack one another. It'll be like the internal war of the U.S. government and they won't be able to, to have any peace because they're attacking themselves from within. The goodness of the Lord is the only thing that gets me through. It's, it's his word and, and knowing he's there in the middle of the night, two in the morning. Who am I going to call? I call on him. They say, well, you're a recluse. I say, no, I'm not a recluse. I'm, I, I have satisfied. I don't need to call... Um, friend A, B, or C and talk about what's disturbing me unless we want to call and pray together. Because I've got my way. That's a pretty cool thing to have, to be satisfied that, you know what, at long last I can go to the Father. I don't know, my friends, what I would do without my faith and without a place to go. And it's very, you know, disconcerting to have Christians angry at you. You know, I've been persecuted by Christians. Let me just, people that, yeah, I know. But I have actually been persecuted over the years by Christians. <laughs> so now they're, be, they're getting persecuted. It's amazing how many people are suddenly not proclaiming their faith. Have you noticed? They're just not doing, they're just not, you know, wearing it on their sleeves anymore because of the change in the political climate. Hey, God sees that. You're failing the test. You better, you better wear it on your sleeve. Like I went back to my dream. Remember, we began with the dream. Last night I had a dream. I was before the judge and, you know, the, because I was, I was hauled into uh, jail because I was praying in the park with some people and, uh, and somebody reported it. 
there's, they're evil, the people that are standing and holding hands and praying over there under that tree, you know, you're not bothering anybody, but, well, that's, but they've been trained to call in when you see some evil thing like that going on. And then the judge asked. And then I, you know, I basically was defending myself because I, I don't need a lawyer to speak for me when we're talking about things like this. And I simply said, I am what I am. God, you know, made me. And God made you. And I, I just, uh, he said, well, don't, you can't pray in public. You know, you, know, you have to, well, if, if it happens, you know, I'm always in prayer, whether silently or with other people. But we're always, you know, if you define prayer by talking to God, communicating with God, uh, then, then it's a constant thing. It's, not, it's like, it's just like my arm. It's not separable. And then, well, we'll see how you feel after 30 days. <laughs> 30 days in a hole. It's like, oh, well, I'll probably increase my faith. I, I don't know, you know, well, then we'll kill you. Oh, well, I'll increase my faith even more and other people. Nothing is going to come to an equilibrium rest here. The Lord's going to move. And he's going to, you know, a lot of people who are blind will see as events unfold and chaos ensues. Now, remember also that a lot of the chaos that you're going to see is planned chaos. They're planning on chaos that they will then emerge order from and they also have the order ready to go just like they got the Supreme Court justices who are leftist, uh, you know, shills who aren't even fit or qualified to be on the bench of any bench anywhere. Just criminal thugs giving criminals is that there is no power other than the Lord's power. They have no power. He that is in me is greater than he that is in the world, according to God's word. I'm here as a witness to what the world's... I don't need to get emotionally involved. I predict that the government of the United States and Europe and wherever else there are governments and whatever they're doing are all going to be in internal wars and collapse. You can call that World War III if you like, but they're all going to... There will be no order out of chaos. There will be great death and destruction and horrors, but at least by then they'll stop it with the chemtrails already because they'll need the planes for something else. Just before death, we see a beautiful array of sunflowers. We used to have sunflowers in New Mexico before they started putting the drought in there with the uh, planes. Lord told me not to worry about it. He allows the earth to be hurt. He makes beautiful things and then he crushes them. You gotta get into the rhythm. Oh, there's a rhyme and a reason. It's, 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 he doesn't break things and hurt things when there's obedience and fidelity and love, no. It's when there's hatred and rebellion and perversion and, and immorality. And a, the thing he hates the most is his callousness toward the children this callousness toward hurting people, like the, the way the Benghazi thing was with, the, with, the, with, with, with this callousness about the people dying, like, ah, who cares, it's just, you know, just four guys dying, no big deal. It's this cheapening of life. So he'll say, okay, you want to see it cheap? How about I'll make it worth not even one cent? So that the perpetrators will think they're getting away with it when actually they're cutting their own throat. And that's, you know, and you, there's, there's no uh, fixing stupid, you know what I'm saying?